this is just a, a real a, a, a great turnaround, a tough turnaround. Um, we didn't have much time today to um, get on the court. We just did individual skill work, and then I, I met with the four point guards for over an hour and just kind of, you know, publicly handed the team over to them and asked what they needed from me, and, and they were great. They were fantastic. I just don't want there to be any uncertainty moving forward, and I, that's my job, to make sure that my players know their job. And um, there was some ambiguity and some uncertainty, and, um, you know, I want to fill in those gaps for them. So um, it was a very good meeting. It was a lot of communication, and, um, you know, moving forward, I'm excited. I think that we can be a very, very good team. Um, we were a great defensive team last night, and how we defended 26 turnovers and kept Syracuse to that low of point is is remarkable. Um, but we had to defend, you know, in desperation, and we did. And um, so, obviously, some the confusion was on the offensive end. But yeah, we we're gonna do a lot of things. But the thing is, is like you know, people want to say blame the one person and I'm sorry I've coached long enough very rarely is the turnover just one person's fault there's probably more to it there's a lack of cut or a float instead of a cut or a, you're supposed to be here and you surprised me went there and I threw it you know it's like an interception and you can blame them all on the quarterback but probably so I just don't have that philosophy they're team turnovers and we all you know you don't just punish oh, you had five, you have five sprint. Like, it's a Miami turnover regardless, and it's it's my fault too because my players aren't certain during most of those turnovers. There is the occasion where someone does something they know not to do. You don't dribble over half court into two people and pick up the ball. We know that since middle school. Those ones, there's – but even in that case, they probably didn't see the other option. And there is on film uh, open but not available. And so we had some people open but not available – and we we need to be more available. How about the the team mood? I mean, it, it, you know, team mood fine. Yeah, I, I um actually I took the the point guards and then position coaches took their own um, players today, and um, did a nice list of um, three things. The players last night I wrote them at about I don't know what time, but it was late in the chat room, and just said hey. Tomorrow morning, have three things ready to your position coach that you want to get better at. Just three things like own it, take accountability, and seek seek coaching and seek help. And then the position coaches then in turn, when they met with them on the court, said, we want you to give coach three things that in the foxhole. You're going to do this, these three things for us, and we know that's never going to change. So we can game plan for what you're going to consistently do for us. So that was a nice exchange. I mean, we're all, we're all fixing. I mean, and you don't panic. I mean, we're 18 and something. I don't know. But um, – there's more opportunities for wins, and we got to get some more wins, and that's how we are. We're not panicked at all. And I, I, I will say this again: Syracuse is a very good team, and there are some, a lot of very good teams in the ACC. And Syracuse, I mean, the 26, you know, the number is glaring: 26 turnovers, but they average 25. Right. Yeah. Ever, they average 25, and they average 14 steals. And they had Duke down by a million. I mean, they're good, and if they get to do what they want to do, and you don't burn them for it on the back end, then you're stuck with a problem. And they did what they did. And I, even if it was 26 turnovers, but on the flip side, we got 50 points beating the press, mm -hmm. you know, it would even out. But we, we didn't. It, that's where we, we were lacking our aggressiveness to say, okay, I turned it over. Next time, when you go for that pass, I'm going to fake and get a layup. We didn't do that. We really, really played between the hash marks. Um, and so they really bottled us up. But so it's maybe not indicative of a – it's not like a – trend or a problem on the team well they have had some yeah we've had we've had some turnovers but gen generally we are averaging more possessions mm -hmm. so this was our lowest possessions I mean we're, we're, we just gave them possessions and if we're I've said this since I got here I'd like to average 100 possessions a game and if you have 15 turnovers and 100 possessions you're still giving me 85 chances to beat you and we're going to score point per possession this game we we frankly gave them too many and didn't play at a fast pace, so that's what's inexcusable. The, that that formula was inexcusable. Mm -hmm. And you have fewer steals than you normally have too. Right? Yeah, but that that was um, we were really grinding out on the defensive end. You know, I I, I we weren't going, we weren't pressing them at all because uh -huh. our our man to man held up. It was great. What do you expect from Boston College? Wow, can they shoot? 
they can shoot like crazy, and then they have two nice centers that I have a lot of size that are really um, skilled. So if you do double team them, they're going to beat you with the pass. So it's going to be um, we have to defend the umbrella, the three point line, and in, and it has to be worth our time to go if we are in the paint to go run out and challenge a shooter. That's got to be worth our time. It can't be a five foot closeout. It's going to be a twenty foot closeout, and. Um, that is why I thought we would probably need our legs more than they needed the thrashing today because we get on a plane tomorrow. So I, I, moving forward, um, we're going to need a ton of defensive energy again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I have great training staff and a great strength uh, and conditioning staff, and I consult them constantly. And I will literally have a, a clock. Like I make whenever we start activity and practice, they write it down, and I limit the activity based on. I say I want to go only an hour. It might be an hour and a half if I'm talking or whatever. But when we're actually active this time of year, you don't need to go more than an hour. So I, I'll have them keep me on a short lease on that. Yeah. And how you deal with that as a coach in terms of yeah. Your yeah, and it's what got us the 18 wins. And last night, it might have been what gave us seven or eight more turnovers, probably because of the just the uncomfortableness. Like sometimes you just shorten your bench and say, okay, the five most reliable players are going to play regardless. Um, so that's something I will analyze a little bit more as today goes on. But I believe in them. You know, I believe in all the players on our team, and, and we do have many faces of Eve. <laughs> um, we do. I mean, we can be really athletic in the post and really fast in the post, and we can be really settled and ball secure in the post. Um, we can put some shooters on the court. We can put some drivers on the court. So, um, But somebody like, for example, Keanu Harris last night gave us fantastic, reliable minutes. That's something she wouldn't have done in November under all that pressure, but she actually had better ball security than some of our veterans, and that's because she's gotten minutes, and we're going to need that. So I'm going to stick with that. I, I, if, if you're going to ask me, do you going to choose to believe in your players or choose to not believe in them, if my mistake is that I believed in them, I'll take it. Is that, does that make your job harder? It does. You've got to make these split-second... Yes. It makes you, um, in, in, as you're analyzing the games as you're watching and meeting with your staff or just in your quiet moments, should I have had so-and-so in there? You know, we needed this, you know, there's, there's so many good options. It's not like there's no, well, she shouldn't have been in. It's like you look at your bench and go, well, maybe we could have needed Erica's defense and rebounding and leadership during this moment. So um, there are, but I'm, I'm, I make quick decisions and I trust my instinct a lot, but I definitely, I'm, I owe it to my team, to the talent that they bring me to make sure I'm maximizing what they can give. And I will spend time on that. Absolutely. Some coaches go, well, it's just, I'm going to play my eight because it's easier. Well, you know, I'm going to do what's best. And if it's harder for me, it's harder for me. It's kind of a fun hard. You do a lot of breakdowns analytically. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. At halftime, I get every line up and how efficient they are and what sets we've run and what we've done, I get all it, and I process it in two minutes. But I'll get 13 different lineups, and I'll know that they were two for seven, and um, our efficiency, and we were 0.7 points per possession, and you know, and last night, like the start of the second half, our starters had six straight empty possessions, and um, I need to look at that for our next game. Who, how many people keep those stats? Two. Uh -huh. Yep, and I mean, I, I. It's a printout, and I, I'm yelling for it to, to get to me so that I can. Um, and then the positive negatives, like it's so it's on a computer, it's printed out, and then I have the positive negatives. So Jessica Thomas is plus seven, you know, and Mace is, my, you know, and you go, really? It, it, so I, the plus minus sometimes is a little skewed, but the, the offensive efficiency, um, I can look at a lineup and think it played great defense, and I go, oh, but that lineup together had seven turnovers. Okay, I do get surprised by that, and I just keep it in my mind and try to make the right subs. Is that old school way of doing it? I mean, we hear uh, Jim and Nagy talk about Ken Palm. Yeah, yeah. Is it just a little different than he is? I, I, ju I just, I'm, I, um, 
No, I mean we have our own. We, we have a synergy stats that comes out too. But in a game, I think if I've done a good job as a coach uh, in the game, um, the game plan and the strategy and all that, my players should have those concepts pretty much, unless like, Syracuse didn't play any defense new. Like we were ready for what they did. So I, it's more so managing your personnel and it's it's who's if we got an open three, I can as a coach say that's great. We got an open three. But I think my job on game day is, well, who shot it? So that's what I got to control more. And that's where, you know, when you're confident in your team, you know, you, maybe you run someone else there. Are you into analytics and all that? Because that's become such a big part of the Yeah, Yeah, um, more so for scouting the other team. Yeah. And then um, I, I, um, I build projects, video projects more so with um, – I, I think video is the best teacher. I, I, the players I did, the, I, I, we'd have a meeting and there'd be all these stats and I go, well, here's your possessions off of ball screens and here's your whatever, whatever. And they're, just, they're like, can I watch it? You know? So I teach the video. I know what I need to show them and I can say, you know, you're, when you go left, you turn it over 26% of the time. I can tell them that, but I don't throw it out in front of them. I show them. Mm -hmm. So. It's really changed though, coaching, right? I mean. Yeah. Hey, instinct trumps all. Instinct trumps all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At the end of the game, I promise you, I'm not saying whatever. I'm looking at their play faces and, you know, giving a good read. And, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, like, history, your history with them, you know, it trumps it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I mean, as the season goes on, you kind of earn the tryouts over, uh -huh. you know. So come come January, mid-January, and I pretty much every year say, okay, you, you've had your interviews, you've had your tryouts. I've seen it. I have the volumes of whatever. But that's why I wanted them today to, to seek their improvement and them today to proclaim what they will be. They will consistently do these three things for us moving forward. And I made them write it. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to write it on a piece of paper because I, there's just a certain point of time where there just needs to be a little bit more ownership. And every team goes through it. And, um, you know, so if they don't do those three things and they're not playing as much, it's a little bit easier of a conversation. Anything else? Good luck up there. Thank you.